a thousand miles off the coast of California is a large and slowly swirling region of ocean called the North Pacific Gyre. Basically the jet stream goes that way and the trade winds go that way and as the world turns it starts the water starts moving in a clockwise motion in the case of the North Pacific. So there are these currents on the edges but the middle is very calm and things coll naturally collect there. So in the case of the North Pacific Gyre, um, everything that falls off of the west coast of North America and the east coast of Asia will probably end up stuck in there if it doesn't sink or decompose. And of course, plastic uh, does not decompose and a lot of it doesn't sink. It just floats forever. We have a program at Scripps called the UC Ship Funds that allows graduate students to propose their own cruises, which is really cool and really unusual. Um, and we were funded. So all of a sudden, there we were, uh, heading out to the gyre. Every day, we would do a certain amount of net tows. And then we would have these very intensive 36-hour periods. We would stop, and we would just intensively sample a spot uh, over and over to really understand what was going on in this particular spot. And that was also part of the mission, actually, of CPLEX, was to try to target high plastic areas and accurately measure what high plastic was, what it looked like, and then what was the impact on the local animals. When we got out to the transition zone between the California current and the gyre, all of a sudden, we just started getting huge amounts of plastics in our surface toes. This is a surface sample that we took with a plankton net. Here's another one of our finds. Um, this is in this jar, a plastic drink bottle uh, with barnacles and uh, bryzoans, which are another kind of invertebrate growing on it. So although we would see the occasional bottle floating by or net or like just a piece of plastic, actually the vast majority of it is microscopic. So one of the things that I study are the little invertebrates that grow right on the plastic, like barnacles and anemones. And this plastic is providing a surface for animals that would not naturally live in the middle of the ocean. So we think that just for providing the surface, it's really, it might be changing the oceanic ecosystem. One of the things that I'm working on is going through all these little pieces by hand and identifying the animals that are growing on them to try to track what is moving where. It's very, very hard to clean up for a couple of reasons. And the pieces are very small. I mean, they are crumb size and smaller. So to, in order to pick up pieces of that size, you need a very fine net. And a very fine net is going to catch everything else as well. So you would almost have to clear cut the top of the ocean to clean up all those little bits of plastic. We were about as far away as you can get from people. We were 1,000 miles from California, 1,000 miles from Hawaii, 1,000 miles from Alaska. You really cannot get much further away from civilization than we were. And seeing the sign of people and sort of our disposable lifestyle out there in the middle of nowhere made us all really sad. People like to say the ocean is downhill from everywhere. Um, everything ends up in the ocean eventually if it you know, doesn't wash up or go someplace else. So people in Iowa who are throwing things into the rivers, that's going to end up in the ocean. Uh, so it really is an issue that affects everybody. Um, so yes, but that's great because that means that everybody can help.